Hello friends and welcome to another video. So in this video I want to answer a question and it's why I did I use an ultra linear connected type 42 to drive the 300B. There's a couple of answers to it. I wanted to drive the, the 300B and, the re and, and to ha use it a stronger tube but still tick stick to two stages. And um, um, because previously I was driving the 300B with a Type 26, but that is quite a low amperage tube. It can maximum, I had tried 10 milliamps, but I felt it couldn't actually drive the authority that I know an output tube like the 300B can have. So I was looking for some for a two-stage design um, that could deliver enough power. Now the Type 42. Um, can can easily sort of run 30 40 milliamps over its uh, over its plate um, it can dissipate um, you know I don't know how many watts probably 16 20 watts or something probably um, I don't know what it is exactly but um, it's not on the data sheet but that was one of the ideas however one of the problems is um, that when I used the 42 as a uh, triad connected um, a, a triad connected it only has six times amplification, uh, which is definitely not enough to drive the 300B uh, from my sources. However, as a pentode, um, it can go up all the way to 260 times. Um, and what that classically would look like is probably something like this. So, if I had a pen, uh, if I'm operating it as a pentode, I could actually put it here. I've got the proper amplification going on, so the input signal here. Um, I've got a load resistor, I would have a cap uh, and this could actually drive the 300B quite properly. The only problem is that the 300B has a high input capacitance so I need to have quite some current which I'm solving with using a high current tube here and another problem is that once it gets to with large voltage swings and it gets the grid gets to zero volt it starts conducting a couple of milliamps of current which means the current doesn't go entirely here it also needs to go here and to the ground and if you then look at the data sheet you'll probably find out that you can't actually use a resistor of more than 10k which would mean that the output impedance here so the, 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 the impedance that this tube sees is only 10k to ground, which you lose all your amplification. And um, which means you can't actually drive it and you don't get the amplification here. Uh, because there's such a path to ground, it will just suck up that signal. And as a pentode, it is so much, it is really not suitable to drive um, low impedance um loads it likes high impedance loads something like 200 k or something that's when you get the amplification and it still uh, can deliver quite some current uh, current in a, a pentode like this which is an, a power pentode it's not a signal uh, a signal tube so this is out of the question now one of the things that we can do is move to a circuit like this so we still are cap coupling. However, what we have here is a grid shock. So we want this to be a very high value. So maybe something like 500 Henry's or something. Um, it doesn't need to conduct much current. So five milliamps or so would be uh, enough if you don't use a, a class A2. So you don't drive it in the positive area. You just keep it maybe to zero volt at the grid maximum. And what you can then is the electrons can still very easily flow that to here. Um, even if you have like a thousand ohms here, that is way under the 10,000 that is specified. So it has a nice path here. That means electrons um, don't build up here. Um, they can freely flow flow up here and the current can flow here away um, rather than building up a charge on the capacitor. So, however, for the music signal, the 1000 Henry's here or 500 Henry's here is a huge barrier. So it's a huge um, uh, resistance for AC si signals. So AC signals can't go through here. It sees a very high load resistance, which means we get very good amplification from the pentode um, together with the high load here. And we get the same effect. We still get all the current. We can drive the 300B. However, the problem was I didn't have a good grid choke available. Plus I didn't have a good very high quality cap here 
and I'm really talking top quality caps because um, if we do this then what you would normally already call an audio file cap I just don't find they sound very good I don't like their sound um, so you really need to get a premium cap and probably with bypass and then you can do this this kind of stuff and it's it's a very good idea so I didn't have it so I was looking at an interstage connection so 42 into drive an interstage and then drive the 300b so then you have the same thing 300b sees a very low um, dc resistance to uh, to the ground or negative biases in many case um, and the 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 ac so the music signal gets superimposed using the the, the interstage transformer um, so that is a very good solution now then we have th th this problem if we had a full pentode, it has a very high plate resistance. We get the amplification, we will have the plate resistance to deal with. And if you have a very high plate resistance, it means this majorly impacts the frequency response that we get here. So the bandwidth dramatically increase, decreases, which means probably um, if I use it in standard form in, with full, full amplification, um, I would get a plate resistance of 100k. and um, I would maybe get frequencies from 1000 Hertz uh, actually f f going through full and it would completely drop off. There was no bass, no mids. Um, it would completely drop off because of this. Because what we need is something with a low plate resistance and then uh, the, the interstage com uh, starts, work, uh, starts working well um, and it needs to have high enough inductance but there is no interstage that can deal with this. So you need a low plate resistance. Now luckily there is an intermediate stage between triode and pentode. It's actually a completely smooth scale. We can actually choose anything between pentode and triode operation. And the way that works is that if we have our interstage, we can actually have the ultralinear taps. And I won't go into too deep, but we can actually choose it here. We can choose it at 75%, at 50%, at 25%, and anything in between, as long as we've got the taps. Now I've got four taps on this transformer, um, so I can choose any of these because um, it's a Lundahl and, and it, it allows and it has these four um, uh, completely separated and available to me, so I can connect it up like a, as I want to. Um, I chose 50% in my set in my amp that you that you could have heard in the sound clip. By the way, link in the description if you still want to hear this sound. Uh, it's not ideal because I. I um, I, I used the wrong transformer for this, but um, it still, dem I think, demonstrates potential, uh, this connection. But let's look at this a little bit more. It, what is in between these things? Now, if we have this pentode, they, they took some measurement. I've got some graphs. And one of the things here is here on the, on the right side, it is uh, operating as a triode and here uh, as a pentode. Now, what happens? Let's first look at the power. Now, these are three power outputs at with a 5k load, 6k load and a 7k load for the K, KT88. And as you can see, as we move from pentode to triode, you can see that uh, after about 50%, here 40 to 50%, here's 40, there's 50, it starts dropping off and you can see that um, when they're using it as a triode, we get much less power available to us than in pentode mode. But we can see here that up until 50%, we basically got the same power output um, available to us in ultra linear connection or distributed load um, as as a pentode. So we don't lose it. We're not losing anything. But uh, as you know, we were very interested in the plate resistance. So let's have a look at that. So this graph here is the the Z out. So the, this is the impedance out. And as you can see here, as a pentode, it is very high. And then it drops quite rapidly. So here at 25%, it is dropped almost immediately to the level of uh, a triode. So it keeps dropping though. And then we end up here. So what we do by choosing it here as 50%, we're approximating the plate resistance of uh, a triode. However, we're getting the, the, the amplification, the power of a pentode still available to us in ultra linear mode. So that is a promising thing. Um, let's look at distortion as well. So distortion is a pentode. Um, 
and this is with a, high, a lower load with 5k load and this is with a 6k load so you can see that the distortion drops as we have the load higher um, but we get also less power but you can see after 25 percent we basically end up with the same distortion level as uh, a triout but wait there is more here is another one. This is from a graph from um, the patent as it was lodged for ultralinear operation. So these two guys, David Heffler and Herbert Cruz. Cur um, so they lodged the patent for ultralinear operation and they had this graph. So probably with a different pentode. Power, they said, ran like this. So as we move from pentode to triode, the power went down. And then we have the output impedance the, or the plate here drops precipitously and then um, drops quite gently until we hit triad operation but they put something else in there and it's something that I heard that I really don't like when pentodes are driven to their max these true red graphs that I just uh, accented with the red um, marker represent the distortion level in intermodulation distortion and the, the continuous red line is at a low level so low level intermodulation distortion as you can see here um, drops from 0 0.8 to 0, what is it? 0 0.6 to 0 0.4 percent when you have a low level signal and you can see it's a bit higher as a pentode but then the triode has its uh, famous low distortion and it also shows up with low um, intermodulation distortion however if we drive the triode to its max so we have a high power output look at what is happening here this is this line it actually shoots off the roof and this is my big gripe with flea power amps and other tube amps that i find when they're driven near their max they sound terrible and i i, I really don't like it and i'm wondering whether it's because of this um, i didn't actually notice but as you can see as we go towards the triode the, the high the intermodulation distortion goes through the roof it actually goes from 10 percent to 40 percent at, at real high output levels so that's an interesting one and of course as we staying for example at 25 percent this is still extremely low they had the high level intermodulation so if we use the full power of the pentode which we have available to us we still have full power here at 25 percent um, we have low output impedance and we have low intermodulation distortion even at high levels so that is the reason why i went to this circuitry and that is the answer why i wanted to use it i wanted to use it i want to stick to a two tube design not go to three tubes and i wanted to um, use i didn't want to purchase two new uh, items here um, so I wanted to work with something that I had available, so I had an interstage available, even if, though it was not optimal. A um, bit too, lo too, lo too low inductance for this, for this particular uh, configuration. But it gave me all the advantages of properly driving the 300B, um, current-wise, capacitor-wise, and, and I can hear that it's, 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 it's like that. Um, and I got the amplification and i got the bandwidth back because uh, of the plate resistance so i think it is a valuable tool in an amp designer's uh, cookbook or maybe if you're looking at buying an amp and you're seeing why why they're applying it you can you can see that this is one of the options that you could consider um, um, it is also just interesting this um, now tonally of course i haven't said much about it i think it sounds fairly good but there are a couple of things still that I find sounding wrong with this amp and the bandwidth limitation that I've got here is still not entirely good. Um, so it is to be continued, but this was the idea behind this. And sometimes you just, you know, nobody does uh, ultra linear in an interstage. So I just had to try it and see what, what, what the, out, the outcome was actually of a configuration like this. Um, so that's that. That's something in your toolkit as a, amp designer or and um, I thought I'd bring that to it and also I think this is a, a very um, an aspect um, that is just a, a lot less known um, about pentodes and also the fact that uh, it's not just one setting ultra linear it's actually a gradation it depends from tube to tube how that actually looks like and how it behaves um, 
and it has a lot to do by the way with the physical uh, the physical position of the screen so where the screen actually sits in a tube because with some tubes it sits close to the middle with other tubes it's far closer to the plate um, it's shifted up a lot um, and that actually seems to influence where you should actually connect this tab or um, on your primary side so that was it for this video. I hope you found this uh, informative and um, interesting. Um, thank you for tuning into my channel. Thank you for supporting me and commenting. If you have any questions on this or on my amp um, with the 42 drive and 300B, um, let me know in the comments and um, I'll answer any questions that you have. And um, yeah, if you haven't listened to this uh, audio clip, my last video was the 42 uh, drive in the 300B. I'll put a link in the description as well, so you can just click on that if you still want to hear it. It's not entirely optimal. It works well for jazz, but not all um, music groups sound that that well. Um, uh, it, yes, it's it's non-offensive, but it's uh, there, there's still something um, off with it, and I'm not sure because it's of the ultra linear or just that I didn't implement it as an entirely. And this this interstage is not optimal um, the way I did it, so. To be continued this topic, I will definitely return to it at some point. I will also try some different solutions to um, driving uh, these type of power tubes. And there's something else as well that I want to look in, in into in the next video. And that has to do with PSU impended impedance. So the, the, how the impedance of the power supply influences the sound as well. Um, I've touched on it before. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to do this video, but that, that is also a thing that I noticed is of influence. Um, anyway, this is this video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a great day or a great week, and I'll hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.